introduced to Western civilization and Joe was lucky how you do it. When Christopher Columbus discovered the new world and brought them back here, as far as he had no idea of the impact of that, or the impact it would have on human geography, which had never been exposed to these foreign people before. He makes a whole great deal. Humans have been eating it for a while long, since farming began, about 10,000 years ago. But even then, most societies historically removed the dark meat husk and instead ate white bread, which is not a coincidence because it's in the dark husk that gut destroying rice is obtained. However, since about 1950, the use of whole wheat and health foods have skyrocketed in our society, as well as other Latin rich foods. Do you know what else has happened since 1950? The obesity rate is more than triple. The diabetes rate has skyrocketed 800%. An astounding 7% of Americans are now considered overweight or obese. And I was one of them. As a heart surgeon, I simply couldn't get my mind around. How could America, the best medical technology in the world, the richest economy, a gem on every corner, and an abundance of health people on every grocery store aisle in the United States be getting worse every year? Well, believe me, there is an answer. And there is a way that I've found out through the three words of the story of the climate stand up. Many health problems, a lot of
good to see everybody that's here uh, inside the sanctuary uh, this morning. And welcome you, welcome all those uh, joining us on Facebook. Glad to have everybody here. Got some guests from Sweet Georgia. And uh, it's a good deal, good deal. All right. A uh, couple things. First of all, I know that it's Caitlin Brabson's birthday. Uh, she's not here. Melissa's not here, but maybe they're listening. Um, any, any other birthdays? Good. You don't have to. Where? Oh, she is having a birthday? Well, they can't see you. She, she a God tree. We will not talk about eggs. We won't. You can be like Wendy, be uh, 32, T-O-O, not T. -O -O. Uh, okay, well, I guess we'll have to sing. So. Uh, also, uh, John and Kim Weaver is having an anniversary this week, the 7th, and for them it's 30 years. So uh, congratulations to John and Kim. Uh, I understand that Kim has a trophy husband. I believe that's what John considers that. So. <laughs> All right, buddy, will you lead us in happy birthday? Happy birthday. saying the radios are not working so let me check Can anybody hear me? No. Yes. Not the ones inside. <laughs> Somebody out in the parking lot, let me know if you can. Okay. birthdays and anniversaries down. Um, I don't know of any announcements. Just, we'll just have our services coming Wednesday. Hopefully you notice we're just going to leave this on because we're doing a bunch with it today. And uh, But uh, you'll notice next Sunday uh, Brother Rex will be here preaching and uh, so uh, we'll be on vacation. So uh, I know you look forward to that. Uh, any other announcements? The 25th. The 25th, the work day. Yeah. Baptist campground. Yeah, there's no Ash Baptist campground. Um, the 25th, so anybody can come out there and help us. Uh, also, Sarah Week to Mo and any other women. And, uh, we well, we need some work done, so we need some women there. <laughs> well, we need both. Yeah. I know, it's, it's tough, it's tough. So we got a lot going on, bring you a shovel or something in the prayer garden a little bit more, and uh, there's all kind of things that needs to be done. We'll cut the grass, so. We're going to have a stripper there, and there's going to be a bus to drag. There's plenty of work for everybody, but we can encourage everybody to come and this place out there. Yeah, if you ain't been out there, just come out there and hang out with us. It's a very peaceful place. So um, that'll be good. Also, uh, let's see, uh, what time does that start? Probably about nine. Nine or so. All right. Okay. Uh, I want to, I know he didn't 
want this, but uh, I'm going to introduce somebody to you. Uh, this is Mr. Denny Gray uh, down front here. He's the new pastor up at Warrensville United Methodist. And, of course, he'll be at uh, Clifton and Smithport as well. So we're glad to have Denny. They just got moved in. So uh, he's been watching us online, so he come and joined us today. So, uh, Denny, we appreciate you being here. You want to say anything? I don't know who's seen that. You have that for time. It's good to be here in Warrensville. I have been, been with you for about the last month online. But I appreciate y'all having We have a bye week in between our moves. And, I We're super glad to have you, and he was very excited to know that we could co cooperate. Uh, we get along with our methods, brethren, and do a lot of that, things with them. That, that was one of the most exciting things about the church was they emphasized we work with the Baptist church. I was actually raised in the Baptist church, so that really excited me. <laughs> good, good. All right, any other announcements? All right. When are we doing right now? Give me a minute. My sound people, ain't nobody here. I'm just going to get my exercise. Oh, you're going to be singing that. Okay. All right, if y'all want to stand, in just a second we will sing God Bless America. The words will be on the screen. Um, Amen. Mm -hmm. 
is a beat.
everybody in prayer now as we do. Uh, ask you, do you have any particular prayer requests on your heart this morning? Part of my church is here. As we transition and we try to do this, figuring out how to come back in the building and how to do it with masks and how to do it with COVID. Do I shake hands? Do I stay away? This, this will be a difficult transition for, for not only for me, but for my churches. Yeah, he said something earlier. He's like, Getting to know people when people are wearing a mask, you can't see what they look like. That's going to be a little difficult. And uh, then when they take the mask off, you're like, <laughs> but, uh, but we're definitely praying for the transition there um, for churches. Um, certainly want to keep in mind all those affected by COVID. And uh, I know everybody's trying to be safe and smart. Uh, best we can do. And uh, we still got to live, but we got to be smart and safe. So, uh, of course, we have our normal, our normal uh, folks that we like to pray for. Certainly, continue to remember Virgil. Uh, Kathy said this morning that uh, the gel that's leaking in his eye will take a few months, same as his back surgery, just take a few months. Uh, continue to remember Cheryl and, of course, Miss Terry, uh, Terry and David. Um, our shut-ins. Uh, I think possibly that uh, Lois and them might be watching us this morning from Pigeon Forge. Uh, I think they've been over there ever since they were here that Sunday. <laughs> He's never going to come home. But uh, I just remember them, Josephine and Dan. Anybody else? Well, let's pray together then, shall we? Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day that you've given us, for the beautiful sunshine. Lord, we truly count it a blessing to be in uh, this place this morning that we can celebrate and fellowship with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, we are grateful today that we live in a country that's free, that we can come and we can worship. Lord, I'm grateful this morning that the freedom in which we have, so many people got up this morning and come to church or drove into the parking lot, sitting out there or sitting in their homes watching on Facebook. But Lord, we're just glad that we're together in our hearts, unified as a church, as a body of Christ. We remember all those throughout our county, throughout our land, Lord, that's worshiping this morning as well. We do pray for our prayer request. Lord, you know those uh, unspoken requests that's on the hearts of your people you know exactly what needs to be done. And this morning we pray that your will would be accomplished. Lord, we trust in your will and your way. And we trust in you. Now for the rem remainder of our time today, Lord, let us lift up the name that's above all other names. And that's Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. For it's in his name I do pray. Amen. Amen. What else we got? something a little bit different. I mean, set Jimmy up. So, uh, ushers, if you guys will uh, get ready. Uh, Bobby's not here, so y'all have to get you another leader. Uh, while Jimmy's singing, I'm going to let you do the offering. But um, I know you make sure you send somebody outside. And um, so let me get Brother Jimmy set up. Jimmy's going to come sing a song. It's a couple years ago, I think. Or what last year was it? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I don't know, I slept since then. But, uh, but Jimmy's going to sing a song that everybody loves, God Bless the USA by Lee Greenwood. And uh, he does a great job with it. So uh, y'all enjoy that uh, while these guys take a call. Y'all bear with me. I'm, uh, I don't know, every, every time I have a birthday, it's like uh, my voice throat closes up a little more it seems like but uh, I'm going to give it a good try this morning but we're here not just for this song is not about entertaining anybody this is about uh, just giving God praise for blessing our nation and, and also asking him you know because I sing it uh, and we need to think about it as, as a prayer to him that, uh, that he might bless us and, and, um, and, and, and guide us and we'll live in a way that, that deserves his blessing, even though we none of us deserve it, uh, 
what he's done for us on the cross and with his, through the Son, his Son Jesus Christ. Uh, it's by grace that he uh, he does give us that. But we do need to always remember him and be thankful every day for what he does for us and give him honor. If tomorrow all the things of God were for in my life and I had to start again with just my children and my wife, I thank my God above to be living here today because the flag still stands for free and they can't take that away. And I'm proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free. And I won't forget the men who died, who gave that right to me. And I gladly stand up next to you and your lip finger till today. Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the USA. From the lakes of Minnesota to the hills of Tennessee, across the plains of Texas to sea to shining sea, from Detroit down to Houston, New York to LA, there's pride in every American heart, and it's time we stand and say, Proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free. And I won't forget the men who died, who gave that right to me. And I gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today. Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the USA. so much, Jimmy. Ooh. Go back there and turn number two down. Nobody, nobody wants to hear me that, that much. And, Amen. And turn the fire <laughs> on. Thank you, Patsy. I always, I always look to you for yeah. encouragement. And I think that's, yeah, that's pretty good. I know you just want to be a blessing. Isn't it? So, all right. You take your Bibles this morning and turn to the book of John. Lord, come on, give me a thing. Can't we run some duck work? Come out right here or something? How do I roll then? <laughs> All right. John chapter 8, verses 31 through 36. This morning, uh, I just want to bring some things to your remembrance. 
I know this is a special time of the year uh, in which we celebrate our freedom. I know that many of you uh, went to see the fireworks. I'd say the I'd say the county Rex department is going to have, have a hard time moving that back to the Ash Park. And uh, a lot of people really enjoyed that. And um, so it was good. But uh, you sit and you think about it. And uh, you think about all the things that's going on in our country today. And certainly we are blessed to be an American. We are so blessed to be an American. Amen. And uh, have the freedom that we have. And so certainly want to bring that to our memory this morning. We celebrate what it means to be independent, to be free, to enjoy liberty. We had a choice this morning, and we're better than the majority of people in the country, or in the world today, rather. America has become a term in the world that's somewhat synonymous with liberty and freedom. That is our probably our biggest held and, and most praised of all the blessings, and we do enjoy that. I thank God this morning that we have the freedoms that we have. But I suppose that we all know this morning that freedoms that we enjoy sometimes are abused or at the very minimum misused. And I would say that we're in danger of losing the very freedom in which we celebrate because of the abuse of that freedom. I hear so many people say so many times, well, I don't want the government hearing what I got to say. Well, what do you say? I don't want the government to know what's going on in my mind. What's on going on in your mind? Put a little tin pull around your head and they can't read your mind. That's 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 not <laughs> We look around today and we see the freedom of expression being abused. When we see someone saying, I don't like that. I don't care if you like it or not. But I don't like that. So therefore, because I don't like it, I'm going to get rid of it. Or I'm going to tear it down. Or I will tear you down because you don't agree with me. Today we see the abuse of freedom as it comes from not only the current events that we see going on. And I, I think I'm like most everybody. Let's make it clear. Protesting, being against something that you think's wrong, that, that's about as American as apple pie. But a lot of the junk we see going on today certainly is not protesting. So for those who protest, yay. But we see some of the stuff that's going on. It's, it's incredible. But another abuse of freedom that we find in America is uh, the filth that comes out of Hollywood, the movies, the music, etc. It's that old saying, just because you can do something don't mean you ought to. Compare all the filth. I, I, I want us to just take just a moment this morning and think about, think about the filth that comes out of America, but yet all the freedoms we enjoy. And then think about a country like Iran, who, who virtually has no freedom, but yet you don't see filth coming out. Oh, there's sin. Certainly. There's all kind of abuse and stuff going on you just don't see about it. But, it, it. but if you look at the two comparisons, freedom, the choice to, to do what you want to do comes at a high price. I mean, you know, when you make your choice, we have to make the right choice. In the name of freedom, an awful lot of things go on that are abusing that freedom. And I believe history will tell us that if we continue to abuse that freedom, one day we will lose that freedom. Now I know that's a downer. So let's move for a moment to something more positive. Because what I want us to do is like, certainly we're celebrating America today. Nothing wrong with that. Fourth of July. America. Or as they say, America. Just leave that y'all. America. Um... Certainly we celebrate that, as we have seen this morning. But the Bible has a lot to say about freedom as well. Think about Romans 6, uh, 7, and 8 talks about the fact that we're free from sin, free from the law. We celebrate our freedom, our Christian freedom, our freedom in Christ. Over in Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, the Bible says, 
Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. We understand freedom in this nation because we live it. Every day of our lives, I know what freedom means. I know what freedom is because I'm free and I'm able to make choices. And I know what freedom in Christ is because I've lived that too. Jesus said over in John chapter 8, John chapter 8, begin with, begin with verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews who believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And they answered him, we be Abraham's seed. And we're never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou you shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. Verse 35. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. I hate it when somebody says, that's the truth right there, and the truth shall set you free. That's a false statement when somebody's talking about that uh, opposite them talking about Jesus Christ. Because Jesus, he says, I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. But the Jews here in this says, well, we don't even know what it's like to be bondage. Let me tell you something. That's exactly where we're at in America. You and I have no idea what it means to be in bondage. We have no idea what it means to be a slave. We have no idea what it means not to have freedom. Is there anybody in here today that has never had freedom? I was born free. Born free. I've never known nothing but freedom. So I don't know what it's like. So that's what these Jews were talking about because obviously they should have known their history, but they were talking about their lives. What they were saying was, in my life, I, I, I don't know this bondage that you're talking about. We could say the very same thing. They said, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say we will be made free when we're free already. They didn't understand. Then Jesus answered them. And he ends with, if the Son sets you free, you'll be free indeed. Now let me share a few thoughts concerning spiritual freedom. And I want us to look, first of all, at the possibility of freedom. Now, as best I know, everybody in here, I believe that we're all, that we all have spiritual freedom. But there perhaps could be someone that's never came to that point to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Maybe, maybe it's in here. Maybe it's out in the parking lot. Maybe you're watching on Facebook uh, right now. And you have never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You don't know what true freedom is. You have physical freedom, but spiritual freedom can only be found in Jesus Christ. So there's a possibility of freedom. He says, if I set you free, you'll be free indeed. Consider for a moment the incredible hope that's expressed in the promise that Jesus can set people free. Unless you've had a sheltered life, you've probably uh, known someone that has been enslaved to a sin, been enslaved to an addiction, and they can't break free from it. Recently, just very recently, we hear of another person that, that lost their life because of drugs, because they're addicted to drugs, and they couldn't get free from those drugs. But Jesus says, if I set you free, you'll be free indeed. There's ungodly chains or addictions that we see in America, and those ungodly chains may be uh, easy to identify. Drugs, addiction, that kind of thing. But they may be just a little bit harder 
to identify maybe even with the words these chains are more acceptable like fear, greed, poverty, being worldly, doubt, anger, bitterness, legalism, racism, insecurity, despair, and depression. These things that can have a hold on someone. But yet Jesus says he can set you free. Whatever category you classify your slavery to is a result or at least has the same result. And that is this, a failure to experience the abundant life promised by following Christ. Church, is it easy? Is following Christ easy? Do you find it easy to be a Christian, to, to do what you're supposed to do every single day? No. In fact, it's pretty difficult. The freedom offered by Jesus is spiritual. His freedom is not a political revolution. True freedom is not about changing your outward circumstances. This is a significant concept. Because all across this planet, we have brothers and sisters. Think about that. No, we don't know them. We don't know their names and, and perhaps only see their faces on a video or something. But we have brothers and sisters who has absolute no physical freedom today. Those this morning that's paying the price of, of what they did, they don't have their freedom this morning. People in a third world country or in Iran, for example, has no physical freedom, but yet they can have spiritual freedom through Jesus Christ. That blows my mind. I think they probably understand it a little bit better than what you and I do. Because when we leave here today, when we walk out those doors, we can choose to go wherever we want. We can get in our car and go get something to eat, or we can go home, we can go riding around, we can, we can do anything. Just about anything. It's significant because it reveals that Jesus can free you no matter where you're at. Think about Paul in the Damascus Road. What a strange place. Think about the prodigal son in the pig pen. Peter was fishing. And fishing sets you free. No, it ain't fishing that sets you free. It's Jesus that sets you free. One woman was drawing water from a well. Another woman found freedom when she was caught in adultery. The thief on the cross was being executed to death. But Jesus said, today you shall be with me in paradise. Found freedom on the cross. Spiritual freedom is not dependent upon physical circumstances. Even those that may have led or contributed to your bondage. But Jesus can set you free. Jesus can set free a marriage without ending in divorce. Jesus can set you free and give you money without you making a deposit. You don't believe it? I got some testimonies for you. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody had more money than they had money? And all of a sudden, somewhere, money came in. Jesus can set you free from your past and your current failures without you having to load up your U-Haul truck. Unless you change churches, then you got to load up your U-Haul truck and, and move. Don't misunderstand the concept to mean something that it doesn't. We may need to make, Christ may move us to make decisions to change our physical or circumstances. But one of the main truths of divine freedom is Jesus is more concerned about setting your soul free than setting your physical self free. So freedom is offered by Jesus is spiritual. But Jesus' freedom is also purposeful. Jesus describes his freedom as uh, an offer to abide in his truth. Freedom is not a lack of restraint that allows one to fulfill any selfish desire that they may have. That's one of the problems we have in America today. I see it, I want it, and I'm going to get it. And if it makes me happy, I'm going to get it. So it's not the lack of restraint that allows us to fulfill our desire, but genuine freedom takes place 
in I've called the stadium of divine truth. You may hear that voice, and we've been talking about the last week or two, hearing the voice of truth. We may hear those voices, and we may have desires, but we know that the divine truth comes in the Word of God. As we abide in Christ, we're released from the chains of the world to be released to be that what God wants us to be, all that God wants us to be, everything that God wants us to be, like a fish that was created to swim in water, to be in water. That's what a child of God is like. It's that simple. I've gotten several texts and phone calls over the past week thinking about that, that peace that passes all understanding. You stand in. You remember it? It's not that tranquil location that's so nice and that little creek just bubbling and you feeling good. It's that little bird singing in the nest that's hanging above the raging river in the mighty storm. That's the peace. We were created to walk in fellowship with, with God, but sin hinders that relationship. And it enslaves us to a separation of God. Our fellowship is broken. You've been there. I've been there with my fellowship with God broken. And it's not a happy place. So we have the possibility of freedom. But I want us to think too, looking at this scripture in John chapter 8, some perils of freedom. Some roadblocks to freedom, if you will. Even though Jesus clearly declared that freedom was possible, the sad reality is there's just millions upon millions of people who do not share our type of freedom, our spiritual freedom. There's folks that are bound. I know that many of you here this morning as firefighters and EMS, and over the years you've responded to a lot of suicides. I don't think you ever get used to that no matter how many times you might see it. Someone that at that moment in life, that their mind is so filled with that captivity that they have no hope. But we have hope in Jesus Christ, don't we? But sometimes they're perils. The following is not an exhaustive list, but an exhaustive list, but it's several of them. I look in the scripture here in John chapter 8 and I see the first peril of, of, of ignorance. Of just, just raw ignorance. Jesus is declaring this new truth to someone who does not know that the freedom is available to them. The Bible describes those who lack knowledge of Christ's ministry as living in darkness. And we know that Jesus came to bring light. And we know that Jesus tells us then that we must bring light. That that's our job. That where we go and what we do, our job is to bring light. Not our light, but the light of Christ. So we have to strive and do the best that we possibly can. We fail and sometimes our light is not quite as bright as it used to be. But you and I today, we can leave here today with a brighter light. When we have forgiveness of our sins. When God cleanses us from unrighteousness and purifies us. It's not my behavior. It's not my circumstance. But I can walk out here today with a brighter light because of what Jesus does. Not because of what I do. My life's pretty deep. But his light's not. There's people living in darkness. And we're the light. The second peril is arrogance. Ignorance. Some people just don't know, but then some people know and they don't care. The Pharisees' statement that they have never lived as slave is, is not only is it inaccurate, because we know the history, they knew their history, they just wasn't thinking about it. Not only inaccurate, it's arrogant. Israel had experienced slavery under the Syrian Empire, the Babylonian Empire, the Persian Empire, the Roman Empire. 
But their greatest slavery was in their own sin, which is what we're, where we're at. They were unwilling to admit that they had failed to meet God's holy standard. And we just went through Exodus, and we saw where our loving, faithful God, when he made the law, he made a way to be forgiven of the law because God knew we were going to fail. My God loves me. Our God loves you. And he made a way. They lived by a legalistic code and were very arrogant about it. They rejected the offer of God's amazing grace. And we live in a society today where so many people reject God's amazing grace. Another roadblock would be reluctance. That's the third pearl. The peril, rather. That prevented some from responding to Christ's offer of freedom. Our, content, our, our text here reveals in verse 30. As he spake these words, many believed on him. So we know that some believed. We know that they had an opportunity. That everybody there had an opportunity to believe. But others heard what Jesus was preaching. Knew it was right. And still, they were reluctant. This group was not uh, just ignorant. They weren't just arrogant, but they were reluctant. Complacency. That's another peril, another roadblock. In our text, there's an exhortation to be free indeed, to have complete freedom. And this exhortation stands in contrast to those who would accept marginal freedom. These people were happy by just attending synagogue, just going to the synagogue, offering a few sacrifices, celebrating Holy Day Feast. But Jesus offers complete freedom. Just like people today, sometimes they will settle, just come to church on Sunday morning. Well, I do. I'm living right. I go to church every Sunday morning. I hardly ever miss. But what about the other six days? Are you living in that true freedom? Jesus offers true freedom. So we have the possibility of freedom in our text here. But there are perils. There are roadblocks to freedom. And outside, maybe in here, but outside we see people, our family, our friends. They meet these roadblocks to freedom. And they don't make it. But I want us to see one more thing today. Because I see in this passage of Scripture that there's a process of freedom. You see, Jesus identifies this process for experiencing true freedom with two words. If, then. The process should not be confused with a legalistic formula. He does not say, if you will come to me daily in quiet time with at least 30 minutes of prayer, what if he have said that? What if Jesus would have said, you are no longer allowed to miss no more than two Sundays per, Sunday, per year? What if the Bible said that? I bet this place would be packed. We'd be putting on our phones and our calendars. Man, I done missed two. I can't miss no more. I got to go whether I want to or not. What if he says every day you got to spend 30 minutes? You'd have your timer on your phone, wouldn't we? Beep, beep, beep. 30 minutes is up. I'm so glad Jesus didn't do it like that. What if he said, if you will tithe 10% of your income each and every time you get paid, then you'll be free indeed. If you'll have quite time for 30 minutes, you'll be free. If you only miss two Sundays a year, you'll be free. What if Jesus would have said that? Now you see where I'm going with the misuse, with the abuse of freedom. Because we abuse our freedom. Children of God, sons and daughters of God, wakes up on Sunday morning and decides that they'd rather sleep in than come to the house of God. We make decisions all the time. I, Y'all know I'm the chief sinner. But there's a thought here. 
there's an understanding here that you and I need to make today that we have the availability to us that we can abuse or at the very minimum misuse the freedom that we have. Because God didn't say that we had to do all those things to be free. I repeat, he, he did not say that we had to do those things. So he did not prescribe a formula but his words do reveal a way in which things operate. We know that. We know that there's a natural reaction to things because God said it in place. For example, if I, would have, if I was to say to you that you are free to get up in the morning and watch the sunrise, you're free. You have the freedom tomorrow if it ain't raining, to get up and watch the sunrise. But you got to do two things. You got to get up before the sun rises, and you got to face east. east. I was wondering if everyone knew that. <laughs> you got to get up in the morning, and I know that's hard on a lot of you. It's hard to get up in the morning for some people. Ain't it? It's the rest of us, we have no problem getting up. Morning's the best part of the day. Amen. It's all downhill from there. But you got to get up and you got to face east. If you sleep to 10 o'clock and you look west, what are you going to miss? The sunrise. You'll never see the sunrise. So there's a way of doing things. There's a way of doing things. It's the way things work. That little word if is a big concept in the kingdom of God. The word represents an invitation. True freedom will not attack you. Rather, you respond to God's invitation to accept his complete freedom. That's a beautiful thought. But before we close today, I want us to share with this too. Uh, Jesus reveals an expectation for you and I to abide. Because I, I see there's two concepts that comes away from this. Number one, this, this abiding refers to a perseverance. True freedom is not found through this casual glance at Christ. You've got to spend time with him. You've got to spend time with the Lord. I'm thankful that God doesn't put us on a timer to say that we have to spend X amount of time with him but we better be spending some time with the Lord. Amen? Amen. We better be spending some time. We're not getting to know, we won't get to know the Lord unless we spend some time with Him. So it doesn't say you have to spend 30 minutes. He doesn't say that I have to tithe 10% of my income. That's the Old Testament stuff. I can give whatever I want. But I choose. Or you choose. We have so many freedoms. That Christ gives us. Because we don't live in the law. We live in the grace. And we have freedoms that God has given us. So let's not abuse them. Let's not misuse them. Let's spend time with him. Verse 31 says. Then said Jesus to those Jews. Which believed on him. If you continue in my word. Then are you my disciples indeed. Wow. That's what we're supposed to do. Continue in his word. We need to dwell in his word. Jesus is not talking about a 12-week Bible study. He's not talking about a 30-day trial. He's talking about every day, every minute of every day, living, dwelling with the Holy God through his son, Jesus Christ, with his spirit living in us. That gets me excited because I fail a lot. But when I'm reminded, when I'm convicted and I'm forgiven and I feel that fellowship restored, ooh, that's good. The word picture communicated here is one of moving into a new home. The second concept is uh, of abiding is a specific place or location because Jesus declares that true freedom is found in my word, my word. There's a lot of words out there. 
There's a lot of voices out there, as we've talked about. But it's found in His Word. True and co complete freedom is found in Christ. Heads bowed and eyes closed. I may ask today, if you have not accepted this true freedom, please let it be today. Let, let today be the day. And we want to give you that opportunity. Whether you're sitting here, here inside the sanctuary, as we bow our head and just have a time of reverence, Maybe today is the day that you need to regain that peace in your life by regaining that abiding with the Lord Jesus Christ today through a rededication of your life. I want you to know that if that needs to take place today, this altar is open. Those who are sitting outside, I want to speak to you. Could today be the day that you need to rededicate your life? Maybe you don't know this freedom. Those who are sitting in their homes right now or wherever watching on a device, let the peace of God that passes all understanding fill your heart even now because we are all united in the Holy Spirit. We may be apart physically. But spiritually, we're, we're united through the Spirit of God. Heavenly Father, we come now to this time. And Lord, we want you to reign here today. We want your Spirit to reign in this place today. Lord, as we leave this place today, let us be grateful that we live in a country that's free. And we have our choices. So we choose to be thankful. But Lord, today, let us choose to be obedient to you. Let us choose to follow you, to abide in you. Lord, let us to understand. Lead us to understand. Father, that true freedom is only found in you. We love you. We ask this in Christ's name and for his sake. Amen. May God bless you today. I'm, again, I'm so thankful for those who came today, those out in the parking lot. Hang out. We'll be out there in just a minute. Sunshine. And those at home, God bless you. And until we meet again, Wednesday. God bless you.